Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. O I A A A A A Ha, are you here? Papa Flemmy's advent calendar is nearly over. Only a few more days to go. That is very sad. Then you have to wait one whole year once again for the next advent calendar. But after the huge bombardment of you guys with <laughs> 45 mini videos in the last few days, I decided to take it easy for today. We are going to do quantum calculus. Sadly, it's not the quantum calculus in the regular sense. This is going to make for a new series, a completely new one, when the new year starts. Going to be very interesting for those of you who are interested. Keep watching the channel up until then. But we are going to take a look at something different. And for this, we are going to take a look at Desmos at first. So as mentioned in previous videos, I was playing around with parabolas a lot. And what I noticed is that they can trace out various nice patterns if you basically um, re reflect them in a coordinate system and rotate them a tiny little bit. And I put a parameter A here and you're going to notice the more we increase A, the more it's going to look like an atom, hence the title of the video, quantum calculus. And yeah, it's going to get pretty funky the more you increase A. But the most aesthetically pleasing I found to be A being equal to 2 which is what we are going to go with today. We are going to find out the area of this atom shape that you are seeing here, the area being enclosed by all of those four parabolas in an atom shape. So as you were able to see, I only called it quantum <laughs> because it looks like an atom somehow, okay, like a model of an atom in some kind of way. I thought it looked kind of cool and we want to find out the area of this thing today, okay, the area that it takes inside. Basically we have this atom, so what's the whole area being enclosed by those four parabolas, you could say. And by the way, if you haven't checked out Stemage EU yet, then make sure to do so because I just recently released the Cyber 10 Security, this one right here, looking pretty fresh. Support the channel this way, check it out, and now we are going to dive right in. So, when I first did this um, calculation, I was doing it so damn complicated. It was seriously extremely complicated. I was using integrals and the like, but it was all about the intersection point of our parabolas. I did it in such a shitty way, it was absolutely terrible. So at first I would like to mention the point symmetry here. Namely, all of these parabolas are just rotated. They basically are the same parabola, just rotated around by 90 degrees, 180 degrees and so on. Meaning, they are obviously going to be very symmetric. It's, it's, it's like in reflection on the identity function. So if you were to plot, for example, the identity function into here, you are going to notice that we basically just got a reflection going on. This part of the parabola here, reflected on the identity, is going to give us this part of the parabola. Meaning, we have very easy symmetry going on and there are many ways to go about solving a problem like this. But I'm going to do it in the following way. Namely, what we are going to do is we are going to think of some kind of square in here, which is going to meet at the points where our parabolas are going to intersect. It's going to be a square, obviously, by the symmetry that I was talking about before. Meaning what we're going to do is at first, we're going to calculate the area of this square right here. Meaning what we need are the intersection points here such that we know how long one side of our square is going to be. This is like the first thing we are going to do. And after that, all that's really left to do is to calculate, for example, one leaf that we got up here the area of that using integrals for example and then taking it times 4, adding it to the area of the square and then we are done with the problem. This is how I'm going to go about it and what I did at first is I took this parabola that we got here, remember from the Desmos graph that there was negative x squared plus 2 and then I took this parabola that we got right here or I should rather say the principal branch okay, of this um, complex square root you could say. Then I was setting those equal to find the intersection point and obviously I was ending up with a fourth degree polynomial where I had to find the roots. We got four roots, okay? And I tried to factor it somehow, finding the roots. I failed miserably, decomposing it into a linear combination of first and third degree polynomial or two second degree polynomials. I failed miserably, just didn't work out nicely. And then I got the idea with the identity function in here. And this was way easier because both parabolas Okay, 
this one and this one are going to meet where the identity function due to symmetry is going to meet either one of these parabolas. Meaning what we're going to do, since this right here is the identity function f of x being equal to x, we're just going to set these two equal. Meaning to find our intersection point, the x and the y value, what we're going to do is we're going to say negative x squared plus 2 is equal to x. Well, and now we can just start solving a second degree polynomial. Meaning we're going to add x squared on both sides and subtract 2, giving us x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. And this just screams for the quadratic formula. What we're going to do is we're going to find out two values of x, x1 and 2, being equal to, okay, first part is negative 1 half plus or minus square root of this part squared, so 1 quarter, and then we're going to get negative and negative is positive, so positive 2. If we were to expand the 2 by 4 over 4, we are going to get 8 over 4, giving us 9 over 4 in the process. Meaning if we take the square root of this, we are going to get negative 1 half plus or minus 3 over 2. Meaning we got two roots for our x. The first root being um, negative 1 half plus 3 over 2 is going to give us just 2 over 2, which is the same as 1. And then we got our second root being, okay, negative 1 half, negative 3 over 2 is going to give us negative 4 over 2 or negative 2. Now if we take a look at this graph, it's very easy to notice that x2 being equal to negative 2 is not what we are looking for because this is just our parabola being ex extended down here, meeting at negative 2 here as the x value. This is not something that we want, but we got this other root, okay, at x being equal to 1 x being equal to 1. We got our x value for our parabola, where both of these parabolas are going to meet, due to them being very nicely symmetric. What we also know is, since this right here is a square, and our square is basically centered at the origin of our coordinate system, this x value, okay, if we take it times 2, so 1 times 2 is going to give us 2, is going to be the whole side length of the square, meaning the square right here has side lengths of 1, meaning it has an area, so the area of the square is equal to 2 times 2 being equal to 4, 4 units something, area units. Okay, now we find out, and now we found out what the area of our square is, and the last thing to do is to take a look at one of the leaves and then take it times 4. Now you could go about this in different ways once again. You could for example calculate the integral and now we know what the upper and lower bounds need to be from negative 1 to 1 of negative x squared plus 2. And then once you got this you're going to subtract half of the area of the square from it such that you only get the area that we are seeking up here. Or I rather prefer to basically just say, okay, this parabola is now two units shifted in the positive y direction at the moment. Now, what if we bring it down by one unit? Well, this is just basically shifting the coordinate system one unit upwards to exactly where our intersection point of the square and our parabola is going to be. If we were to shift it down by one unit and just take a look at the function negative x squared plus one, then you are going to notice that we are going to get exactly by integrating from negative 1 to 1 our area of our leaf out. So meaning if we integrate this from negative 1 to 1 then you are going to notice that this right here is an even function and we have derived this before on this channel several times and used it a lot since it's an even function. It's 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of negative x squared plus 1 dx. And integrating this is really easy. This is 2 times negative x to the third power over 3 plus x. And all of this from 0 to 1. On 0 it's going to vanish because we don't have a y-intercept. Meaning if you plug 1 into here, 1 leaf is going to be 2 times negative 1 third plus 1, which is the same as, well, 2 thirds times 2 which is the same as 4 thirds. And now the only thing left to do is to say, well, we have to leave four times. Meaning if we take um, the area of all the leaves together, we are going to get four times 4 thirds, which is the same as 16 over 3. And now to get the whole area of our atom thing, our quantum calculus thing, we are just going to add the area of the square to it. So the area in total is the area of the square plus the area of our leaves, meaning this is 4 plus 16 over 3. Meaning in other words this is 12 over 3 plus 16 over 3 is 28 over 3. And this is 
um, seven whole, no, nine whole things. Um, nine dot three period, okay? 9.3 period um, area units. And this is it. This is how you do quantum calculus, at least with parabolas. And I hope you did enjoy this very chill video. I just want to post something very um, dead brainy once in a while here on the advent calendar after so many days of um, extensive calculations and just long videos in general. And I hope you could calculate the area too that we got right here. And I hope you enjoyed this video in general. And if you did, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel and also subscribe to Flemish Wood, my woodworking channel. And up until next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao. Don't forget to stay safe, kids.